Oh yes, we are going to start an aerobic respiration. We are studying respiration and we have studied glycolysis. That is a process that glucose spreads into two molecules of pyruvates. And these pyruvates can later break by several ways that pyruvates can break anaerobically and they can break aerobically. What are the different ways this pyruvate can break? There's actually pyruvates can break in presence of oxygen and in an absence of oxygen. When they break in an absence of oxygen, there are two ways pyruvate can break. Pyruvate can convert into lactic acid and we term it as an lactic acid fermentation. And there is a way where pyruvate converts into an ethanol. We consider it as an ethyl alcohol fermentation. And this is how these are two ways where pyruvates breaks anaerobically either into lactic acid or into ethyl alcohol. But there is another way which actually is a way that produces sufficient amount of ATP which is an aerobic breakdown of pyruvate. And the aerobic breakdown of pyruvate is another story that we'll be talking about in the next class where we convert pyruvates into ethyl acetyl coenzyme and acetyl coenzyme enters into a Krebs cycle and the further story starts which actually converts these pyruvates into carbon dioxide and water and that actually produces a sufficient amount of ATP. So what is actually anaerobic respirations? We have two types of anaerobic respiration that can be lactic acid and that can be ethyl alcohol or uh, alcohol fermentation. What actually happens during these processes and why they are important and what amount of ATP they can produce, we are just going to have a little story of these lactic acids. What actually happens for lactic acid fermentation, we need a pyruvate. And to produce pyruvate, the first process is common. And the process is glucose, by the process of glycolysis, converts into two molecules of pyruvates. This is a common story, which is a story of both the uh, 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 prokaryotes, it's the story of eukaryotes, it's the story of unicellular and multicellular organisms. Wherever uh, it takes place, the cellular respiration by the first process is a process that's called glycolysis. And during this glycolysis, we'll convert glucose into two molecules of pyruvates. Now, there is a probability whether this pyruvate will break aerobically or anaerobically. This breaks anaerobically into lactic acid or lactate. What actually happens? These two molecules of pyruvates are reduced. Two molecules of energy that are, ox that are synthesized during glycolysis are consumed. And NADH oxidizes and it reduces pyruvates into two molecules of lactate. And this is actually a process that is simply reduction of pyruvates into lactic acid is a process that is called lactic acid fermentation. And this actually is consuming two molecules of ATP. In terms, if we count the energy of a lactic acid uh, process, we can say glucose breaks into a pyruvate that actually yields two molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. Actually, the ATP that's produced is not actually coming from lactic acid fermentation, but it's coming from glycolysis. Including, uh, including that all, we can count that there is at least two ATP molecules are produced during anaerobic breakdown where pyruvates convert into lactic acid. But if we consider this process in a separate process and we start from the pyruvate and if we convert pyruvate to a lactate, we produce no ATP, but we are consuming two molecules of NADH. So for the whole process is concerned, we can say we have consumed two molecules of uh, uh, NADH and we have converted two molecules of uh, uh, pyruvates into two molecules of lactic acid. So in the whole story, if we start from uh, glucose and up to a lactate, we can convert a glucose molecule into two molecules of lactates where we'll consume NADH but we can yield two molecules of ATP, which is very insufficient amount of ATP. But actually, lactic acid fermentation starts from pyruvates. Therefore, the conversion of pyruvates into lactic acid is not producing ATP. But the formation of lactic acid or lactate is more important as we are using it for different purposes. If we use yeast in order to, to rise <coughs> a, 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 a tough uh, Rice is produced, which tough rice is uh, is then uh, uh, used. That uh, it's then bagged, and after baking, we convert it into a structure of a bread. So therefore, we can say we can use yeast, we can use fermentation 
and their fermentation can help us produce the stuffed rice and that rice can be bagged to produce bread. We are using this lactic acid and as it's in a sore in test, we are using that lactic acid to add flavor to different things such as cheese and yogurts and etc. And this is also used as a flavor for pickles also. And, and uh, the synthesis of lactic acid in a vertebrates takes place when muscles respire anaerobically. And when a heavy exercise is performed and body runs shortage of oxygen and it distorts respiring anaerobically, it synthesizes uh, acid, which is lactic acid, which is a toxic and that causes muscle fatigue. And to relax body, body has to rest and it has to provide oxygen so that to detoxify the lactic acid and to uh, reduce the tiring effects on muscles and muscles fatigue stops. And this is actually a process that is called lactic acid fermentation. Another process that is called alcohol fermentation. And alcohol fermentation where we will be converting pyruvates into ethanol. What actually happens? The first process is again common. We will convert two molecules, uh, a molecule of glucose into a molecule of pyruvates. And this is the same process glycolysis which is taking place, which is common in an aerobic and an anaerobic respiration. These two pyruvate molecules would now convert into ethanol by a process called alco alcohol fermentation. What actually happens from these two pyruvates at first stage decarboxylation takes place and removal of carbon dioxide is taking place too molecules of carbon dioxide are removed from the two molecules of pyruvates and we synthesize two molecules of acetaldehydes. We produce two molecules of acetaldehyde. Therefore we say alcohol fermentation is a two-step uh, process. On a first step uh, decarboxylation is taking place, on the other step reduction is taking place. What actually happens on the first stage pyruvate is decarboxylated and carbon dioxide is removed and that removal uh, synthesizes the two carbon fragment that's said to be acid Aldehyde. And this acid aldehyde is reduced. The molecules of NADH synthesized during glycolysis are used. The oxidation of NADH reduces acid aldehyde into ether, two molecules of ether. And therefore, in this process also, we are not producing ATP. If we start from the pyruvate, the conversion of pyruvate into ethanol is not producing ATP, but it is consuming ATP in forms of NADH, which are otherwise produced by a process of a glycolysis. But if we start right from glucose, at the end, if we reach to an ethanol, the whole process, if we count the energy of this whole process, so this whole process produces two molecules of NADH that are consumed, but two molecules of ATP that are produced during glycolysis can be a net output of a that anaerobic breakdown where glucose is finally converting into ethanol and we start it right from a glucose. This is a process where we say glucose will convert into pyruvate by a common process called glycolysis yielding to ATP into NADH. And pyruvates will then convert into ethanol by two steps. One step is decarboxylation, carbon dioxide is removed. And two carbon dioxides are removed. And remaining two carbon fragments are acid aldehydes. These are reduced with the oxidation of NAD into NADH and they synthesize ethanol. Ethanol itself is an econom economically important structure or molecule. As we say, this process is also insufficient so far energy is concerned, but the formation of uh, alcohol is, a, is an important product as we in the form of uh, ethanols ethyl alcohol and butanols and etc we are using this alcohol in a different economically important products mostly we use it in a wine beer industry and this whole alcohol wine industry is based on the fermentation where we are fermenting fruits we are fermenting grapes we are fermenting barley and we ferment them into a ethanol and we process it to farm different forms of wines and beer, which are the most economic uh, 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 resources rather. Therefore, we can say ethyl alcohol, alcohol fermentation is economically important. So far its use is concerned, so far ATP is concerned, it produces no ATP. This is said to be an aerobic breakdown of lactic acid and ethyl 
alcohol. And now we will start the actual breakdown of pyruvates into carbon dioxide and water by a process of Krebs cycle. But Krebs cycle needs the formation of another structure that's called acetyl coenzyme. And the next video I will convert pyruvates into acetyl coenzyme and then we will convert this acetyl coenzyme in a crab cycle and we'll study the other process of uh, respiration subscribe my channel share it, uh, share it with your friends also and uh, like comment as much as possible and uh, let's learn together thank you very much joining you in the next video uh, uh, in the uh, next video about acetyl coenzyme the formation of acetyl coenzyme thank you